will against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Now the church said, Amen. 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 Let's, uh, I thank the Lord for Brother Neil and his uh, expertise. Now, it is just, he said something profound at the uh, lesson study, and I said, That's a good sermon line. So, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Morning. We are coming to you from Irma Seventh day Adventist Church here in Columbia, South Carolina. And we wish that you will find peace and comfort and warmth that comes from the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has designed for his people to come and meet together to celebrate that creation week. We acknowledge him that he is the creator and also our redeemer. Amen. So be blessed and uh, may God be with you until he comes. Estamos viviendo de Carolina del Sur en la ciudad de, de Irmo y estamos contentos de que usted pueda ser parte de nuestra reunión esta mañana ya sea que usted lo vea de noche o cualquier día de la semana queremos que usted esté seguro de que el Señor está a su lado que Él no lo deja y que debemos prepararnos para su pronta venida we are indeed grateful that the Lord has allowed us to see the light of the third Sabbath of this year. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time. 2024, we will we will eventually get to that to that point. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Neil, for reading that scripture uh, reading. And I debated, I debated uh, how to name this sermon in our denomination we have a sabbath on the on the first month of the year january designated for religious liberty so we will be talking about some aspects of religious liberty and probably probably it will be something that usually we don't talk about. The fragility of religious liberty. Religious liberty is just like life. Life is fragile. It just, it just takes a little bug, microscopically small, to put you in the hospital, right? Yeah. To have a witness. It doesn't take much, right? So, that right that God has given each one of his children, and that is humanity, to come and worship on the day that he has established. And we acknowledge that there are so many that worship on Sunday. They have not gotten the light yet, you know, and that's why we need to share that with them. But in the midst of that predicament, religious liberty is not just something that we sometimes take for granted, I would say. Let us start us off. What happened in heaven? How would you define heaven? I, there are so many verses in the Bible, both Old and New Testament, that speaks about heaven. 
For example, Psalm 73, 25, I will just mention some of these. King, uh, King David asks, in fact, it's not King David. Let me rephrase that. Asaph, he's the one who wrote that beautiful uh, song, that he was a chief musician, Asaph. And then at the beginning of the chapter, he says that he wondered, I'm just paraphrasing it, is it any good to serve the Lord? And then he says that my feet almost slipped until I came to the sanctuary. Verse 17. It is important, brothers and sisters, to come to the meeting place. Amen. If you think that you have everything in you, that you can skip church, skip it. Be careful. Be careful. But in that Asaph says, in verse 25, whom have I in heaven but you? So we know that God is in heaven. Isaiah 6, 1, the prophet said, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Again, Psalm 16, uh, verse 11. This is King David now. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures. And we know all what Jesus said in John 14. In my Father's house are what? Many How many? many? Is there a mention for you? Yes. And then he said in verse 3, if I go and prepare a place for you. Don't doubt. This is not something to just read by. And uh, this is real as the chair that you're sitting on. Amen. There's a place that Jesus has prepared for each one of us. Also, we're talking about heaven. You know, heaven, the first law of heaven is order. And 1 Corinthians 14, 4, 44 says, Let all things be done decently and in order. Just a picture of what heaven is all about. So heaven is a blissful place, wouldn't you say? Amen. Where God himself lives. And God is love. Amen. God is what? Love. What else? He's long suffering, right? Amen. He is patient with us. That's heaven. Merciful. Merciful. That's right. Yes. Would you say, and just, yes, would you say that in heaven there is perfection? Would you say that? Amen. Yes? Amen. And in this text, Ezekiel 28 15, we know. Because when Lucifer was created, what's Lucifer's name now? Satan. Satan, right? He was Lucifer. He says, God said, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. Perfection in heaven. Well, what does this have to do with religious liberty? He was perfect until Iniquity was found in him. Bad news. Right? In the presence of God, this fella just, it just came up with his own type of government. And we have it here, the five eyes of Lucifer. What did he say? I will ascend what? Into heaven. I will exalt my throne. I will set up upon the mount of the congregation. I will ascend to the heights of the clouds. And I will be like what? Most so what he says in essence, I will just remove God, the Father, the triune God. And I will occupy that throne. 
the five eyes, the pride. This has to do with religious liberty. Because if you look at it, if you look at it, he was the father of any persecution against the government of God. Revelation 12, and this is funny, not funny, but interesting. Revelation 12, 7, 9, 7, 8, and 9. There was a war in heaven. Can you imagine that? We have read that there many times. Michael, that is Jesus and his angels, went into war with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels waged a war. But the good news is that they did not prevail. Why? Amen. Why? Because the dragon, the old serpent, devil, Satan, the deceiver, was cast down to planet Earth. Let's go to 20, Revelation 20, verses 7, 8, and 9. This is the end. This is the end of Earth, Earth's history. Pay attention to this. Started out with a war in heaven and will culminate with a war here, uh, here on Earth. When the thousand years are complete, Satan will release from, will be released from his prison. And will come out to what? Yeah, he hasn't changed his colors. He will continue to deceive. And he will wage war once again. But again, just like he was defeated in heaven, he will be defeated once and for all. Because when he does that, fire will come from heaven Amen. and will destroy Satan and his evil angels and anyone human being that had the opportunity to side with Jesus but refused to. It is a matter of choice, folks. And we made some comments in the Sabbath school lesson that if I am not in the city, obviously I will be out in the city. But whose fault will that be? We have said it many times. Whose fault will that be? Satan's fault? No, uh, exactly right. So what should we do, folks, in 2024? Align ourselves with the plan of God. There is life. I wish, I wish. You would choose life, he says. God. Don't choose death. But you know, the great controversy, that's where we're headed. Right here. The great controversy that began in heaven will end right in that very day. When Satan will come and deceive all the nations and they will march up to the holy city. And the saints, and I hope that each one of us are in the city. Amen. Amen. And uh, that will be the end of a great controversy between good and evil, between God and Satan, once and for all. Amen. Nahum 1 9 says that God cannot take any chances because sin will not arise a second time. Amen. Once and for all. So, why? Why do I. Delay in changing habits, in conforming to the will of God. There's a good reason for that. Because the great controversy is being fought in each one of our hearts. And every second of the day, we are taking decisions for or against Jesus. We are in a spiritual warfare. Would you say? Huh? Yeah. But we are not left alone Amen. because Ephesians 6 delineates the armor of God that is available to each one of us. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Plus, we have two thirds of the angels that didn't succumb to Satan's lies. 
We have the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have Calvary as a testament that Satan is defeated and Jesus will be crowned King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. But in the meantime, in the meantime, Satan that started that war in heaven, he went after the worship of each angel. Think about it. He started that religious persecution right in heaven to a point that he had almost gotten half of the angels. But the Bible says that one third of the angels came down with him. We don't know how many that is. In the millions, probably. He attempted and he was successful with one third of the angels. Religious liberty. He told him, huh, what God has said, mm -mm, don't buy into that. My plan is better. My plan is better. And that lie has perpetuated until today, January 20, 2024. Still. But thank God that the Holy Spirit has not left us yet. He's still working in the hearts of souls. Finding out the truth. And that is where you and I need to get very, very active. Because if not, we will be responsible. We are responsible. If you don't believe me, go back. I have shown you several times. Go back and read Ezekiel chapter 33. What is the, what is the responsibility of us as Christians? It's easy. Is it easy to be a Christian? Huh? Is it? Is it easy to be a Christian? You know, we are told that the first place where the name Christian was mentioned was in Antioch. Now that's part of Turkey. But that city was established by Greeks, and it was a very, very flourishing city. Trade, commerce, you name it. But one thing is that, it, that, that those folks in Antioch, they had something. They liked to put nicknames on anything. Yeah, that was their culture. Put nicknames on people, on things. But when these folks came from Jerusalem, who were those folks? Saints that were fleeing persecution. And they established themselves right there in Antioch. The folks said, wait a minute, there's a new brand of folks that have come here. Who are they? And they started to pay attention to them and they have heard about, there was a man named Jesus and Christ. And they said, no, these folks are what? Christianoi. Christianoi. That's how they baptized them with that name. That group of people new to them. Christianoi. It is not easy to be a Christian. Even in South Carolina right now. You remember the experience of Thomas, one of the disciples? When he was told, we have, the Lord is alive and well. And what did he say? Uh, Unless I put my finger in his wounds, I will not believe. And you know, that is still prevalent in in our society, in our world. God is merciful, isn't he? Amen. And then he appears and he says, Thomas, why are you doubting? Come, see for yourself. And then he pronounced these beautiful words. He says, blessed are those that did not see and yet what? Amen. That's you and I, because we have never seen Jesus, right? Amen. Right? That was something for us. 
J.I. Packer, the late J.I. Packer said, to be a Christian, you must wholeheartedly submit to the living Christ as your Lord and God. I was saying at the Sabbath school discussion, the problem with us is that we want Jesus as our Savior to save us. But we don't want him as Lord. Because when he says, no, this is the way. This is for your own good. We say what? Oh, we bring our diplomas and certificates. And then we start to just with great philosophy. When he just wants us to follow him, to trust him. To be a Christian, you must wholeheartedly submit to the living Christ as your Lord and God. November 1st. November 1st, Fox News presented this. 2023 top 10 worst countries for Christian persecution. And I will not name them because they are good people in, the, in those countries. We have them here in our midst. They're entities that are waging war against Jesus and his doctrines. And people are paying the price in those countries. That's all I'm going to say about religious liberty in the physical world that we're living in. But just like religious liberty was assaulted in heaven, when Adam and Eve had their two boys, Cain and Abel, Cain trampled on Abel's religious liberty. Right? That is what religious liberty is all about. And that is, that is what, in the next few minutes, I want us to, to, to grasp. That so, is not so much. Yes, it is bad that countries and governments persecute these minorities and this and the other. Um, uh, one time, uh, one time um, uh, early on here, I was asked uh, when I was in Texas, how does it feel to be a minority? That was the question that was proposed to me. How does it feel? I said, I have always been a minority. But you were not born here, that's right. But even back in Latin America, I have always been a minority. Even in my own country. Because of my biblical beliefs. Even a minority, even among kinfolk. So let's not get too hang up on the government persecuting. Yes, that is true. But what about religious liberty being trampled by me against you? And that's what I want us to talk about. What happened to Abel? He decided wholeheartedly to follow God's commands. Didn't he? And church goer brother that grew up in Sabbath school and everything, he decided to go rogue. And what was the end result? He went and annihilated his own, his baby brother. Could that be happening amongst us? Think about it. The Apostle Paul, we know his story, his conversion. But then in to the to the epistle to, to the Galatians, he says, I bear in my body scars from my service to Jesus. My question is, is it easy to be a Christian? And here, we will not read everything, but I just I will just put it right there. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 29. Look, he summarizes his sufferings. In labors for abundance, stripes, prison, death. Five times from the Jews, the brethren, received 40 minus one lashes. 
And the list goes on and on and on and on. The church inflicting pain through through trampling on religious uh, religious liberty. So when I decided to cast my lot with Jesus, I knew, I knew that it was, it was not going to be easy. I was baptized at age of 10. But at that time, at that time, my brother and I, we were really chastised by the classmates just because we were Seventh-day Adventists. We would worship on Sabbath. And they would chase, chase us down the streets until we got to the parsonage. Jesus says, if the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. So this is not a surprise for Jesus. If you were of the world, and that's the key, if you are not having any problems, just be careful. Check who your companionship is. Yes. Yes. I share this again with the class. Dad used to say, used to preach. If you are not having any issues in your spiritual life, just make sure who is the fellow next, standing next to you. Because the closer you come to Jesus, the hell you're going to catch. That's not a cousin, right? right? The hell you're going to catch. Why? Why? Because everybody will be against you. And Jesus said, your enemies are from your own household. Can you imagine that? I hope that is not the case amongst us. That all we are working together in the common good for our salvation. Individually and collectively. But Jesus said, would Jesus lie? Would he make a mistake in saying something? The false in your own household will be the first ones. The problem is, if I succumb to their demands, that's when the real test comes. A lot of times we do compromise. So now they're not, they're trampling our, at our religious liberty, but I am succumbing because I want to please them. Guess what? Continue pleasing them and you will get, end up in the same boat if they don't repent. Timothy 3.12, 2 Timothy. Indeed, all who delight in pursuing righteousness and are determined to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be hunted and persecuted because of their faith. This is the amplified version. A very good version, a strong one. Are you delighted in pursuing what? Righteousness. Do you desire to live godly life? Be prepared. Be prepared. Now, let me show you what happened to our Lord and Savior. He went to the pool of Bethesda that Sabbath, and he healed that man that had been laying down for 38 years. We know the story, right? But when word got out, and the fellow goes, carrying his mattresses or whatever they had then, his cot. Oh, what? you're not supposed to do that on the Sabbath day. He said, well, the man who healed me said I could do this. I know it was. I don't know. That's a narrative. And when they found out that it was Jesus, the church, for this reason the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him. Can you imagine that? Because he had done good on the Sabbath day. And Jesus said to them, hey, my father and I have been doing this all along. Where you been? Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him. 
trampling on religious liberty of Jesus. Religious liberty's threat comes from within and without. I said I will not dwell on the without. We know that. You can go to Google and they will tell you all these wonderful organizations that look after those countries where religious liberty is at stake. Freedom. Not being able to, to worship like you and I are worshiping right now. But what about from within? That's within you and I in this room. A sign of the times when persecution comes from within the church. This gentleman, Gray Gilbert, wrote a, a very nice um, paper, I would say. Could you, could you imagine that amongst ourselves we would be used by Satan to trample on your religious liberty? That's what I said at the beginning. This is a different take. Religious liberty coming from within the church. It is high time to cut it out. Stop it. Stop within the church trying to behave in an ungodly manner. What does this represent? What is that? Anybody? Okay. What does that lady on that side is doing to the man? Nagging. nagging. That's right. That's what I said at the beginning. I will use that word. I will nag you to come to church, but this is a different kind of nagging. Okay? Nagging. That is something that we need to pay attention, folks. And I have been concerned for the past 20 something years. And more recently, because it has touched our family, about folks not coming with the decency to thank the Lord because He gave me a roof, He gave me transportation, He gave me food, He gave me health, He gave me life. Amen. But instead, going to church. And finding out who can I nag. Sister Karen, this might not uh, this might be news for you, but that is the reality in every church, every congregation. And we need to put an end to it. Because nobody has the right to nag about something in the church. We have procedures, we have by laws, that we can come together. And if something is not working, we work it out as a committee, as a board, as a whole church. Nagging, a persistent source of annoyance and distraction. And that is what the devil wants. You know, he is more active on the Sabbath day. Distraction. From listening to the things that we ought to. Nagging, troublesome, badgering, distressing, relentless, constant scolding. Who told you that you can scold anybody around here? Even Jesus doesn't do that. Right? He just tells it like it is. But he is not. The only thing he does is what? He knocks at the door of your heart. If I am willing to listen to him, he says, open up the door. And he will come in. That's all he does. We need to. We need to stop that behavior. Because it robs the Christian experience. The late Charles Bradford. Elder Charles Bradford. Used to say. On the Sabbath day. Don't pick up gravel and throw it on the people's face. I don't have the authority or the uh, command from no one to come and chastise you. I am chastising myself as it is. Because everybody here can be 
that person. To disrupt, to destroy, to distract you in your religious liberty experience when you come to church. So folks, we need to pay attention to what the Lord says. What does the Lord say? I love this translation. If possible, Romans 12, 18. If possible, so far as it depends on you, on me, live in shalom with all people. Shalom, we all know that is what? That's where our brethren in Israel, they say Shabbat Shalom. Peaceful rest. Happy Sabbath. That's what it is. We are admonished. Do everything we can to live in, in peace. A lot of times, a lot of times, we don't I have a policy. Let me put it this way. I have a policy for several decades that whatever happens at home stays in the parking lot of the hospital. Right there. And uh, whatever happened to the hospital stays right there in the driveway. Because why would my wife and the kids uh, need to be harassed? Needs to be Need to be nagged for something that happened at the hospital in my workplace. If it does happen. Why? So just th let, 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 let's take this in religious liberty. Have a little, a little time out there with Jesus. I say, Lord, I don't feel like, but help me control my mouth. Help me control my deportment. Let me control my actions. Because I don't want to infringe on the religious liberty that you have given my brother and my sister. In other words, do not, let us not replicate, replicate Satan's antics. Yeah. Replicate. It's not duplicate. It's replicate. Let us not. Let us not. Enough is enough. This world is coming to an end. Or we don't know if our lives are coming to an end. We don't know that. And we want to be found in peace, in shalom with God. If you fear of anything, the Lord says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will what? Strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. If you and I are really, really struggling that we cannot control ourselves, the Lord is faithful and just to help us out. Amen. To help us out. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. There's only two ways, folks. Only two ways. What way will we choose? To quit trampling on the religious liberty of my brother, my sister. Liberty has never been before fragile. We have to protect it one to another. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ will suffer persecution. That's a statement that Jesus said. All right? The desire of a godly heart is to what? To live a godly life. Okay? Persecution will come. We know that. Jesus said it. But let not that Satan will use me as his instrument to inflict on your religious liberty, your religious freedom. If we keep the focus on God and divert it from ourselves, then, then we will bring glory to God in whatever happens. December 16th, just a month and four days ago, we were here 
and we were celebrating what? Christmas. The Christmas. For you folks that were not here, you missed something. <laughs> you remember Zealas played the piano beautifully here? Yeah. Yes. We celebrated Christmas. We started out about 11 a.m. Well, what we didn't know that a Seventh-day Adventist pastor way down south in Mexico, he had closed his eyes in death five hours before we started our worship service. Pastor Mateo Gonzalez Jimenez and his lovely wife, Rocio Lopez Perez. The Lord had called them to work in that isolated region. There's lots of people around there, is my understanding. And he was pastoring several churches. On top of that, he had a radio station, Maranatha, Maranatha, Maranatha. And uh, it was very successful. Not only that, he had a rehab clinic and many youngsters were coming. In fact, to get them from the vice that happens there in that region, he had gotten some soccer teams to play, to get, and the kids were just enjoying it. Right here, this is uh, right there, that screenshot, he was saying, right around that week of the 16th that there were many plans for the radio station and in 2024 it was going to be much better because the Lord was in it and he said I already told my son at 40 years old I am not ready yet to surrender I will continue and I am hoping to see the light of 2024. But if not, I will be okay with the Lord. And he was just broadcasting this. And I cut it right there where he says, I talked to my son without knowing that just a few days later, on the Sabbath day, several men came to his house and uh, he and his wife. Uh, died there. Pastor and his wife, they were faithful until the end. And this is something beautiful that I just found, uh, uh, you know, the serenity of the, of the ocean there. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory, glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. The pastor and his wife were called to be a Christian. They didn't know what evil was being planned against their lives. They're sleeping in Jesus now. They are. But that's not the whole thing. Let's look at the reality. They stood for what they believed. They were threatened and says, you need to cut it out. His response was, I must. I must. The designs of the Lord, we don't know. We don't, I don't question them. But one thing is for certain. One thing is for certain that they stood up for Jesus Christ. They didn't allow Satan to trample on their religious liberty. There may be a price. We don't know. But what we need to do is, and to know is to stand firm and talk for Jesus Christ. Alone, we're going down. Together, we're going up. Amen. 
So may God bless us as we think about what religious liberty is all about. Let's make sure that we are not being used by the enemy to bring my brother, my sister down. Amen? Amen. Let's stand up and, and sing these verses. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Commit yourself to the Lord one more time. Amen. Huh? Yeah. Folks, those of you that have been in the army, you know that battle is not a joke. It's just for the strong and the brave. With Jesus as our captain, we are more than conquerors. It doesn't matter what happens. But if we have our life surrendered to him, we will not be destroyed. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this topic that had to be said to each one of us. Time is ebbing away, and we want to be found faithful as a faithful soldier in your army. You have showed us the way, you have paved the way, how we ought to talk, how we ought to act. So give us the strength, Lord. And you, you, I know you do. With the Holy Spirit in us, we will be more conquerors because Jesus has won the army. In him we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.